Welcome to the second lesson in NativeLang.com's course on language change and language history. This time around, we're going to look at the kinds of concepts we need to be familiar with in order to evaluate whether or not two languages are related and how they're related, how closely they're related. The first thing we need to consider is what part of language are we going to be looking at? What part of a language are we going to be comparing? And through trial and error, it seems the best practice that's been established is to look at what's known as basic core vocabulary. Basic core vocabulary is a range of words, vocabulary items, that stand for common concepts, including family members, including basic concepts that are found in nature, animals, pronouns, very common everyday items that, at least in theory, aren't replaced very much and are passed down to the next generation of speakers early and often. We'll also need to know what to look for when we compare the basic core vocabulary of one language to another. When we look at vocabulary items, which are just single words, what we'll find is that when two languages are related, they'll share a resemblance, a common root. So the two vocabulary items will ultimately derive from the same common source. We use the word common to mean that at one time they were the same, but they diverged over time in different areas, in different speech communities, into distinct words in two different languages. But suffice it to say that cognate is just a term for saying that these two are related words that come from some common ancestor. That's what we're looking for to establish a relationship. But that's not the only reason that two words would look similar. Two words might also look similar to each other due to chance. In other words, randomly over time, especially with small words in languages, we'll find that similar words, similar sounding words, will stand for similar concepts. So we might find that the word for water in one language resembles the word in a completely unrelated language, and the two words may not be related at all. When one language comes into contact with another language, it often borrows words from that other language. It takes words especially for concepts that it doesn't already have. For example, in English we borrow the word café from French café. The two words aren't genuine cognates that developed independently in English and French. Rather, English speakers at some point borrowed the word café from French. The same analysis helps us when we look at the basic core vocabulary list of English. We have a word person. The word person is a fairly basic word, yet it was actually borrowed. It's not a native Germanic word in English, well, it's a native word now, but it was at some point borrowed into English. So when we find languages like Spanish, Italian, and French that inherited this word from Latin, we can't genuinely say, let's compare the English cognate to the French cognate or the English cognate to the Spanish cognate, because at some point English borrowed that word, whereas the other languages inherited it. At this point, you have some understanding of cognates in language and an understanding of similarities that will show up due to things other than cognates, namely borrowing and chance. Now we'll be able to move on and compare individual languages and start to look at family relationships.